As you see, uh, we are talking about a project that's, uh, uh, as Nani already said, working uh, on something in the Al Alpine environment. And people who are uh, participating somehow cover the whole uh, chain from getting the sensor data up to really using them. So uh, Jan Beutel and myself are responsible for the area of embedded systems, uh, information technology. Alan Geiger and his group, uh, they're working on uh, high precision GPS algorithms and to let them run online and offline. Stefan Gruber is uh, using the data in order to do the physical, geophysical modeling and making use of the data in terms of uh, geoscience. Um, then uh, from Gamma, that's a company, we get uh, information about uh, algorithms to process uh, synthetic aperture radar images <laughs> and we try to combine them with other sensor modalities. And then uh, Hugo Rezzo is from the Office uh, of the Environment uh, in Switzerland and they're, used, and they're interested in, in the data and the results for early warning. Okay, so people from the whole chain are involved. So what is the problem about? Um, well, uh, we see lots of destructive processes going on in the, in, the, in the mountains. And this is rockfall, but also rock slides, slippy slides, and so forth. And uh, we are trying to understand um, what is the cause of this and how can we model this. Okay. And the hypothesis is that if we sense uh, information on various scales, so multi-scale sensing in terms of temporal and spatial dimension, then we will be able to build better models and understand these processes better. And for this, of course, we need, luckily, information technology in order to somehow provide this new kind of measurement instrument. Okay? And uh, it has to have some, some properties. It, it should be um, reliable. Uh, generate reliable data, easy to maintain, and of course, if it is used for safety critical applications, it should be really dependable. And in such an environment, that's a challenge. So in terms of challenges and comparison to what other people are doing, uh, current methods, at least in the application domain, are usually taking these measurements, uh, working on them, on the uh, uh, synthetic aperture radio images, and do manual GPS measurements or also with, with other sorts of, um, of, of uh, instruments. Now what we try to do is we try to do a, a global instrument that somehow combines this information and does a much more fine-grained measurement of location and, and the movement. Okay? Of course, difficulties, we need user interaction, variable data rates, uh, because if there's an event happening, we would like to have more data. Uh, and in-network processing in order to understand early when interesting things happen. Uh, so this is uh, what we have in mind. It's a young project, so it's one of these uh, that's running for one year. Uh, and this is what we have in mind. So uh, many uh, of these, several of these wireless sensors are connected to a base station. Uh, the information is then going to a host station where it is processed and combined with uh, data from this uh, uh, SAR satellite images and combined with uh, high resolution imaging that also looking at the scenario. Uh, so uh, in terms of interacting with other projects, so all the data backend is, uh, is stolen okay, from the OpenSense uh, uh, project, so we're using the same uh, database infrastructure as they do in order to, to combine the information. Um, so I said a little bit about the the, the novelty in terms of the, uh, of the uh, science application. Now, what is the interesting part from uh, information technology? So if you look at this sensor network uh, area, so um, there was the initial hope. So, so these nodes are cheap, so we can have plenty of them. So what we try to do, we try to make the measurement stations really cheap. Okay. But what we see is they may be cheap, but deployment and maintenance is very expensive. So uh, just saying, well, we can have many of them, 
this doesn't work out in CS applications. The other hope was, and this is the initial uh, understanding of all this sensor network community, additional redundant node make the, the, the whole system more reliable and fault tolerant. And, well, I said already what it costs if you have more of these nodes. But in addition, more nodes make the system more fragile. That's at least our experience. Okay? So we are somehow working in a little bit different area than what they do. And we try to do really to have an end-to-end -end predictability and efficiency in this system. Because of the reasons uh, I explained already. So, long. so the first question is how do we somehow overall design such a whole complex system? And um, what, where does the complexity come from? So these are measurements we have been taken from, from uh, the locations. And you see huge temperature variations. Uh, you have snow coverage of the sensors. Okay, there may be rockfall and lightning and so forth. And the question is, how do you do uh, design that really lasts for many years? And it's possibly battery or harvested uh, driven. And how do you do that? Okay. And the conventional approach is, we start with a, it, it's, it's somehow the computer science approach, uh, refinement, continuous refinement. You start with a small <laughs> system, and then you step by step make it more complex by adding more and more functionality. And this makes sense in some cases, but in others, this approach has really difficulties. And uh, let me say where these difficulties are. Okay? So we, we have the infrastructure to do that in terms of simulation environment and also in-house testing. Uh, it has been done at the beginning of the project. But what we see is, in order to design okay, under these hard resource constraints, we are completely missing the environment, the uncertainty of the environment. So we are faced with a huge environment. What do the application partners actually want? What, what kind of data do they want? And we are always working on the resource limits. And this under a completely uncertain environment. So this turns out to be very difficult. So many problems at once. So what we decided for the project is the other way around. Okay? So what we did is we start with a relatively feature-rich platform, which we early deploy okay, in order to observe to experiment, to understand the scenario and the environment better. And then in the latest, later stage of the project, we will refine it. Okay. So what has been done, we have uh, several stations running. They are in the real environment. They are producing data. The end-to-end -end path has been established. Okay. Um, and uh, so this is this uh, integration with the, with the data management system. Of, uh, Similarity between the type of data that you have and some of the medical data that I'm looking at. Yes. Things are extremely slow. The data yes. variation is very slow. You have to deal with drift. You have to do, deal with noise at very low frequency. Yes. Uh, how do you filter out, you know, data from noise and making sure the data is reliable? Okay, that's an excellent question for uh, Alan Geiger. <laughs> Because he, he should say something about the algorithms you are using. Okay, tell us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're talking about the the results what you get out from GPS yes. and from other sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we we need a so-called collocational approach where we have a stochastic model, we have a deterministic model, and we have a noise model. And both on on the measurements and on the deterministic model. So we have a model which has errors, we have measurements which have errors. And so we, we go into an adjustment of all data and in fact you get out the complete information of the signal, which will be correlated of course. You get colored noise, you get the information that way. So that's an approach which which we call it collocation. That's uh, an adjustment, simultaneous adjustment, adjustment and inversion of all data you have. So you, you get as a result deterministic parameters and stochastic information. So you, you are able to 
separate noise from drifts and or correlated noise, if you call it noise. So that's that's the approach that one of the the last uh, mm -hmm. new graph I have seen. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you. Thank you very much, Lothar.